Hey. <laughs> wow. Um, this is my second time watching the film. It's just um, so layered, um, so le relevant. I have so many sort of thoughts and ideas and things around form, content, role of the artist, um, structure. Um, I think I'll start with very basic. Uh, we can start maybe with form and thinking about the idea of uh, using 3D. Um, I like to think about um, approaching filmmaking or storytelling being platform agnostic in the idea that um, the subject matter um, dictates potentially the form, but there's a process and a practice to that. And can you speak to that, your choices around that? Yeah, there was a practice more than ever because obviously it was a, a challenge to find a language of my own towards the art of Anselm Kiefer. And uh, even if we speak, spoken about this film for a long time, I was in no way prepared, even when we started, because I look at filmmaking as a form of experience and as a form of learning. And if you know beforehand, well, I just do not know beforehand. Uh, filmmaking is a process and it's a process of learning. So when Ansem and I decided to do this together, and he basically didn't give me any indication from his side what I should or could do. He basically just had one condition and the condition was, Vim, you have to surprise me. <laughs> I don't want to read any concept, don't have any treatment or I don't want to read anything period and I'm not ever going to show up in your editing room just promise you'll surprise me that of course was a tall order because on the other hand that's what I owe to myself to surprise me so I told him from the beginning this will take a few times I'm not going to do this in one go and in the end I needed seven shooting periods seven times a week, 10 days, and afterwards I each time went back to my editing room and studied what I had and tried to understand the language I had at my disposal, 3D, in response to his art and saw what I had, saw what I didn't have yet, and then went prepared for the next step. And then again went back and edited and tried to understand and so it was a long learning process it was more than ever before in a documentary for me a learning by doing but I did slowly get a handle of what my language could do in response to his and from the beginning I had not intended to give an opinion on his work or I just wanted to confront it and I wanted you the audience to be able to confront it not opinionated, but really experience that art. And for me, I mean, I know a lot of painters and I have a lot of painter friends, but Anselm is quite unique in so far as his art needs a different form of experience to live with it, to understand it, to like it. You got to be there and you have to stand in front of it. It's not just the huge formats that he's working with and the amazing amount of work he's produced. I mean, that in itself is, couldn't quite fathom in the beginning, how, how can I get a, even, how can I even stand up to that amount of work? I cannot show it all. But I felt that with my 3D cameras and with the technology we had at hand, I had a certain way to put you in a position to experience it. So I more and more understood my job as a translator between his art and other people who could experience and be in the privileged situation that he allowed me to be. To spend a long time in Bajac in the south of France, to spend a long time in his studio in Croissy 
to be present when he was working, which he was very hesitant at first. I mean, after we had agreed on doing this, and I had agreed to the condition to su to surprise him, he we do ha did have a glass of wine, and all of a sudden he said, Vim, whenever you saw a movie about a painter, didn't you think the most boring part was to see a painter paint? <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? Do I understand right? Do you think one shouldn't see the painter paint? No, he said, that is completely obnoxious. Because what else would he do? He would paint. So you don't want to see him paint. I said, but I do want to see you work. Really? <laughs> yeah, I said, it's part of the surprise. And then he accepted it. <laughs> so, but it was a learning process to really fine tune that language, to make it as much an experience-based language as possible, and take opinion out because Anjan Ansem is a painter on which a lot of people have opinions in the good and in the bad. So a lot of people are against anything he does from the beginning, and a lot of people love what he does and. And anyway, I wasn't going to make a film for the art world. I was going to make a film for people who didn't know him. And I hope some of you didn't. So, um, Speaking of it being an experience, you played with structure in terms of this non-linear aspect of it, where time was collapsed, but there was still a journey because, um, I mean, we start with some of his work being individual provocations, um, from occupations and some of his other work. And then we end in this sort of uh, space of myth, but also this uh, collapsing of the child and the, and, and, and the elder into one. Can you speak to that? The key word in your question and the key word in my confronting Ansem's work was time. Because like no other painter, I felt unconsciously, couldn't put my finger on it, and it's one of the reasons I had to make the film. He did incorporate time in a way that I did not understand at first in his paintings. There was time present in it, more than in any other kind of painting, sculpture. I mean, he did go into lots of fields, but time was an essential element that preoccupied him and that he was able to somehow capture in his work. And of course, time, you know that as a filmmaker, we work with time. And we go and shoot something, and every time the camera runs, and every shot, and every piece is a segment of time. And then we go back home and edit it, and we work with time elements. And we try to construct something in time. So time, in a way, is you know my medium as a filmmaker. And then you confront a painter and he does control time in a way that you do not quite understand. It's not our, my way of dealing with time. And then I slowly understood what it was and I tried to convey it in the film that what he did to his paintings and how he treated them always as unfinished. For him nothing is finished. Some of my favorite paintings of his, I came back the next day, they were gone. I said, where did you put them? He said, here it is. It, but he painted over it. <laughs> so it's always a process. And in that process, he does a lot of things to destroy the paintings. You've seen him burn them or put boiling lead on them uh, or he puts ashes on them, or, or he puts them in an oven and bakes them for a long time, as, and then they look when they come out as if they've been in the Sahara sun for a year. They just cracked all over, and he loves everything that time does to it, and tries to provoke that. And then, also, in his own life, because there's subjects that come back all the time in his work. There are some permanent subjects and sometimes he adds new ones. But I felt he'd been working for 50 years on some of the same subjects, except that it did move on. And I realized here's a man who 
and for me that's really an ideal for a life who stayed in touch with stuff that preoccupied him from the beginning and even from his childhood. And I know how much I profit from my childhood experience as a filmmaker and I know how much my imagination and my fantasy is still based on stuff that moved me when I was a child. So, And mainly, and so often you see ch children disappear in people and they do not no longer are in touch with the child they once were. And with Anselm it was, he was very much in touch with that child inside himself and with the time and with his emotions and his experiences when he was young and grew up in the same country that I grew up at the same time. We were born in the same year. We did grow up in a country that did not exist anymore, period. And that had to reinvent itself and did this with a common understanding and the silent agreement that there was no past to it. For, let's not have a past, but just invent a future. And that, when you grow up, goes into your genes and it's in your brain and you slowly realize there's something wrong with it. Uh, something very wrong with it. My own reaction to, to that feeling was from the beginning to get out. I was always wanted to leave. I, since I remember I wanted to leave this country behind and Ansem did the opposite and that very much attracted me to find out why was that? Why Ansem did just so much insist on poking into this wound and fighting that forgetness? And that was basically my impulse to make the film, to, to bring that out, that constant fight against forgetting and what sort of an impulse that is for an artist. And that fighting against forgetting, you, you include in the work, and he does as well, Paul Celan, the Jewish poet. Can you speak to a little bit about the process um, and maybe your relationship to the poet or what his significance is for the film as well as Anselm? Anselm had allies, and these were always poems, poetries, poets. He very much reads and loves poetry and very often used poetry as titles of paintings and sometimes and he always puts them in his own handwriting in his own childlike hand, handwriting and they're an integral part of what he does and the poetry in it doesn't always explain what what it is about and sometimes it's mysterious but he says these poets are his allies and their words are for him untouchable. He he doesn't want to alter it, or he doesn't. They are not material. But he, these quotes for him are part of what the film is about, or what the painting is about, and what he tried to express. And he quotes in his work more than anybody else, Paul Celan. And I must admit, I wasn't so much familiar with the life and the work of Paul Celan, but I really got involved and in the end knew everything about the life of Paul Celan, had read each and every poem and really got involved in his life story because it was so important for Anselm's work and he cited him, quoted him so often that I realized I couldn't quite do the film without informing you on Paul Celan and without informing the audience and his key poem is the so-called Death Fugue, and at least that's the English translation. So, And I thought it was so important, and I felt that Anselm's work was so much in relation to that. And there was the really... I mean, there was a theory that, that after Auschwitz you couldn't do any art anymore, and certainly not poetry. And I felt Paul Celan had proven that wrong. And he did write about it, and he found words for the unspeakable. And Anselm was very much in awe of his work and quotes many lines from his poetry. So I make, add, added this chapter on this death fugue, and actually you hear it with his own voice, and I'm sorry that you have to listen to it and read subtitles, but that was the condition. 
So it was an important part for me of the film and I always felt it is quite long and it is qu quite, a, quite difficult for you to sit through a poem in doing a movie, but it was either I was going to make this film and have this poem in it or not. So for me the condition of making this film and the condition of making a film about Ansem and about the time he lived and about his fight against forgetness, it had to include the death fugue. So it's in its it's in the in its entirety and you learn a little bit about him. You learn a little bit about a man who lived in a German speaking country, who was born in a German speaking country at the far east of of the it was rather part of Austria at the time, and of the Austrian Empire, if you go longer. And his country, the Bukovina, at the end of the war, was gone. He had a passport from a country that didn't exist anymore. So he had other passports. This became Romania. Now where he was born is part of Ukraine, actually. Ukraine. Half Ukraine, half Romania. So it, his country, where he was born, and where his mother's tongue, the, in the true sense, his mother's tongue was German, does not exist anymore. So there was a very tragic um, base for a writer to write in a language of a country that didn't exist anymore, and the language of the of the aggressors on top of everything, who killed his father and his mother. So. I felt Anselm had really very much adopted his point of view in a lot of his work and his paintings, so I had to make that somehow visible in the film. I think I have time for one last question. Oh, yeah. go on. Oh. No, we go on. <laughs> Look, nobody's getting up. <laughs> <laughs> we only started. Um, as a as as to close, um, did you shock Anselm? And for yourself, what was the most shocking part to you in the making of this film? The most shocking thing for me was the understanding and slow understanding that even if I considered myself a workaholic, I had nothing on Anselm. <laughs> I'd never seen anybody work so relentlessly, so passionately, so entirely. When I walk up, wake up at night, I read a book, and Ansem gets into his shoes and goes to the studio and paints in the middle of the night. And he's very happy then when, he's, when nobody even knows he's there. So he's, he's, his whole life is work. And it's not the amount of work, it's also the dedication to the idea that there's nothing that escapes painting. That everything that you can imagine, and that you hear about, and that you learn about, and that you that is there, science, mythology, history, religion, everything is material for painting. You can paint it all. And that, to understand that, and I really only understood it. You see his library for a little, little moment in the film. I mean, you see part of his library. Because I couldn't show it all. So I went in there, spent some time, and I thought, well, he has a lot of books, okay. This is like the library of a small town, his personal library. But he didn't read it all, I thought. So I went and picked the book, and it was underlined, everything, there was notes in it. He worked that book on mathematics or whatever it was or the whole shelf the whole book shelf on Jewish mythology I thought he didn't really read it all I picked books and books it was all underlined it was all noted it all had pieces falling out with notes and in the end I realized he did read it all he is sort of a universal scientist really and and even if that doesn't exist anymore, people who know almost about everything. He is one of those and he puts it all into his painting and he feels that painting is a way to condense what we are and our identity and where we come from and to combine the past and make it 
live on into the future. And so that is what I really, what really surprised me. And I did surprise him too. When he finally saw the finished film, I showed it to him in the theater. I liked this one. He sat in the first row. And I was in the back and I was, of course, very anxious and had stage fright because he sat there and watched it. And at the end, when the film was over, he, he sat there and didn't move for minutes. And finally, he turned around and said, you did it. You did surprise me. <laughs> and that was, of course, fine. I think he was very surprised to see his own son play himself. We kept that a secret. We had to keep it a secret because otherwise my biggest surprise would have been gone. He was surprised that there was a little boy that played him, although he didn't know it, but he was surprised about the space the boy took. He knew it because at one moment, the last, almost the last shot of the film was when he takes the boy on his shoulder. And that, but the way the boy really represented him, he was he didn't know. So he was surprised, and in the end, so I did what I was supposed to do as far as he was concerned. And I hope I did surprise you too a little bit, and I hope you do have an experience, and I hope you have a way to think about Ansem Kiefer and not really necessarily have an opinion, but that you did have an experience because I did have a huge experience over three years with him and we shot for two and a half years, I edited for almost three years. And in the end it became something that I feel does justice to his work and for me that is the biggest thing I want to accomplish, that a film does justice to what he's, it's about and it's not any other satisfaction than that I feel that you know a little bit about Ansem Kiefer now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this gift. Thank, Thank you. you.